Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate GNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've been looking at the comments regarding the problems we had in the previous episode. First of all, the radiation problem which killed Landley Kerman. And Nathan Gunn said that we should always keep the fuel tank and engine between the crew module and the sun. I had forgotten that that might work with uh, Kerbalism and the radiation because I keep getting comments that it would work with respect to the boil-off situation in Realism Overhaul. And as far as I can tell, it doesn't work with the boil-off situation in Realism Overhaul, but uh, that was just my personal uh, experience. But maybe just for the solar storms, it might work in Kerbalism. Uh, I'll have to see. So, yeah, I had forgotten about that possibility. There are other problems, but basically the suggestion for the radiation was just to top off the shielding. And that makes me wonder why we even have the possibility of partial shielding in the first place, because it won't do any good. We only had one solar storm and it killed uh, Landley Kerman. On an interplanetary trip, we're li likely to have multiple solar storms, considering how frequent they are in Kerbalism. And, you know, if one solar storm can kill Landley Kerman with partial shielding, then multiple solar storms, even if you have full shielding, would kill the Kerbals. So. Well, I guess we'll just have to rely on the orientation bit. So, there's that. And then there's the re-entry uh, issue where we have our pods blowing up if we even come back from the moon. And uh, Joshua Banner suggested that we should just tweak the re-entry heat settings. I'm loath to do that. I'm trying to find if there's a bug or something, really. Uh, I, I'm trying to get feedback to see if other people have had this uh, particular situation with JNSQ. Uh, because... I don't want my experience to be particularly different from other players of JNSQ. I mean, I want to have the correct JNSQ experience. And so the question is whether this is the correct JNSQ experience. In other words, when they tested JNSQ and released it as a mod, did they also have re-entry heating such that they would blow up from a re-entry from the moon? Right? I mean, what was the tested intention of JNSQ? Was this the tested intention? Was what this what the, they were going for? In that case, we can just, you know, go ahead with it. And we'll just use the solution that we've already developed, which is to capture in carbon orbit, low carbon orbit, using propellant, and then have a separate pod bring us down. From the further locations in the system, remembering that JNSQ adds a lot of planets, uh, we would have to have done that anyway. That's sort of a system that we need to develop no matter what. So just a reminder, JNSQ not only has the regular Kerbin system, it also has all the stuff out here, and Lindor and Elu is still there, but uh, there's a Lindor and there's a Hammock and there's a Nara, and I think that's it, but there's, there's moons thereof as well. So coming back from such places, we will need to definitely propulsively capture into Kerbin orbit first before doing re-entry. So it just seems like we have to extend the number of places that we do that for. And um, yeah, I think that covers that. So we'll just try it like that. And right now our only extant mission is the Mimis 4 rally and then the Green Sandstone. We could try the Green Sandstone again, but I'd love to do the same thing twice. They've finally given us a planet flag on the moon, uh, but do we want to risk a Kerbal? Maybe we, we can risk a Kerbal... Sergei. Sergei in Kerbin orbit. Let's rescue Sergei and send Sergei to the moon. And see if that's possible. We just have to plant a flag. We don't even have to bring Sergei back safely. <laughs> but uh, we'll try the three-part mission. And we'll have full re-entry heat shielding on the pod. And the other problem I had was communications. Now we figured out that at a particular launch site, we would have communications, but we didn't seem to have communications from the KSC itself, except later on in the previous video, we seem to be picking up communication from KSC. So it's weird. Um, it's sort of buggy. Somebody suggested that USI might be the problem. As far as I know, USI doesn't mess with the comms. It doesn't even have comm dishes, I don't think. Uh, and it doesn't mess with the heat shielding. So maybe, maybe not. I don't know. The reason why USI and Kerbalism are not compatible, by the way, I mean, I, mean, I sort of know this, is the way that they 
check up on resources during time warp, basically. They have their own way of uh, dealing with resource management and making sure, uh, you know, keeping tabs on how much resources have been used for something, for instance, drilling and stuff like that. So it's that area where they probably conflict. I don't think they conflict on the comms or the uh, or on the heat shielding, but uh, who knows, you know, that, that was just my understanding. So anyway, uh, Sergey, there's a satellite contract, a polar uncrewed. I mean, I suppose we could do with more comms. If we made this into a comm sat, that might be good. And I don't think we've sent, the, the thing is, there's no pop, uh, there's no point in sending a science junior over to the moon if we don't recover it though. So maybe not. Let's just pick up Sergey. And we'll try, we've already planted a flag on Minmus, but we haven't done the moon yet. It's not really worth it, and they got to plant a flag on Minmus one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what, maybe we'll just do Minmus with it, because we've got the science data from space around Minmus, and science data from the surface of Minmus. So, guess what, we're going to try Minmus again, and this time we're going to do it right, and we will see if that works out for us. We won't send another crew member, we just have one crew, because we're going to have to fully protect the pod with the shielding. It's got to be heavier. Okay, so plant a flag on Minmus, again, and sign of state from space around Minmus, and from the surface of Minmus. And we'll pack some extra nitrogen. I think we can just depress, turn off the pressurization system, and then EVA. Somebody thought that the duration of EVA has an effect on the nitrogen uh, used. No, I, as far as I know, that's not the case. Uh, it's just the chunk of nitrogen in the cabin gets released when you EVA. I don't think it depends on the time at all. Okay, so we're using the same Minmus mission that we did before, but we've made some tweaks. First of all, we're keeping the Leo pod because it re-enters so well. But I've removed the food, water, and oxygen from the service module because we're not going to have somebody stay with it in low carbon orbit while waiting for the member to come back from the moon, or sorry, Minmus. So it's not going to need the food, water, and oxygen that's extra, it just needs the stuff in the pod. And it doesn't need extra shielding because once the person gets back, they'll just directly re-enter. So we don't expect any time in low carbon orbit for that. Uh, we have put full shielding on the Hermes personal re-entry capsule. I also had previously had only half the oxygen filled on the oxygen tanks, and so I've topped off one oxygen tank and instead put a nitrogen tank so that we have the spare nitrogen for pressurization. Um, if it turns out that the nitrogen leaks during uh, EVA, we'll just make sure to turn off the pressurization system before EVA. Um, and then after that, everything else is just about the same because it worked, right? Uh, we have plenty of spare Delta V, and the only other question is whether we can deal with the comm situation. So let's take it outside, a regular pad, and see if we've got comms now for some reason. And if not, we'll switch pads. Okay, yeah, we do have comms here at the KSC, regular KSC, so randomly it decides to give me comms and not give me comms. Whatever. Anyway, okay, so where is our Kerbal to be rescued? Uh, so... Sergey, Easy to remember. <laughs> Maybe we should be launching from the Valentina Cherishkova launch pad. But, uh, yeah, Sergey's right there, standard low Kerbal orbit. We'll wait for that wreck to come around so that's easier to rendezvous with. So yeah, our comm situation last time was just a peculiarity as far as I can tell. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up, and uh, let's go with the liquid ignition first. And go! And here we go again, this very interesting shaped rocket. I haven't named it yet, if anybody wants to propose a name for it. 
Okay, getting ready for booster separation. And booster set. So the main thing is we need to make sure to try a different biome than last time on the surface of Inmus. And separation, separation, and ignition, and big fairing. All right. We don't even have an extra ignition on this stage, but we have plenty of Delta V. Alas. I could have upgraded it to the better version, but and that would have an extra ignition, but I didn't still. But we don't want to lug it along while rendezvousing with the rescue Kerbal anyway. Uh, didn't want to be that far behind. Misjudged that. If we're circular, we should catch up though. At the other end, Sergey is at 110. Hopefully, Sergey is a pilot or something other than like a miner or a baker or something that USI adds. Uh, uh, we'll take multiple orbits to get to him. But that's better than. Oh, it takes a little bit of time to taper off. Shoot. Anyway. Uh, but that's better than having to do a whole lot of orbits. Uh, I'll use RCS to bring that down a bit. Well, actually RCS is not that powerful. Oh, we should just jettison this stage anyway, it's useless. Oops. Okay, off. Now maybe we can use RCS a little bit more efficiently. Not a whole lot. We found Sergei Kerman, okay, we better hop to him. But um, let's just get him out of there and have him EVA across, probably for the best. What kind of pod is this? Deprecated, do not use. Well, see, Sergey, it says deprecated and do not use. You didn't pay any attention, Sergey, who's a geologist. God. Can't exit, module has no hatch. No, no, this is why it's deprecated and do not use, Sergey. See what you've done? Oh my god. We can't rescue Sergey, and Sergey's gonna die too. No, <laughs> don't leave deprecated do not use pods in your mod, please. I guess, I mean, I don't know. Maybe add a hatch? It's not that hard <laughs> to add a hatch. I can't do it for you right now, mod. But, oh, what? We need to say, okay, fine. We, we can't develop the technology to make a claw. Uh, let's see. Okay, we've got our mission in orbit. Let's see what we can do to emergency rescue Sergei, if possible. We need a claw, obviously. But I don't think we can unlock the claw. Claw is pretty high technology, after all. We only just got junior docking ports. I don't suppose there's any part that BDB adds that acts like a claw. Well, the claw is under actuators. Then we will need to upgrade the VAB to get actuators. We technically have the science. But we don't have the funds. We don't have any easy way to get the funds either. Let me see if there's a contract that would give us enough of an advance. I doubt it. None of them seem to like that. Like to do that. And our mission to Minmus is going to take too long to get the funds to save Sergei. So we're close. I wish there was something we could sell. <laughs> um, uh, hold on, no. Uh, this, this seems like a job for the admin building I never use. I've never bothered with this stuff. Each unit of reputation. That's only a thousand funds. But it takes 5%. See, I mean, we have to have the 
science gains and the setup cost will be most of our science anyway. But it's an ongoing thing. I just want immediate. This uh, immediate is good. But that's not enough funds. Yeah. So, no luck there. Well, there's a reason why I don't use this feature, because it never gives enough. Hmm. Can we just, like, take out a loan to build the R&D upgrade? Hmm. An engineer could theoretically put stuff on Sergei's pod, right? But we'd have to put a lot of stuff. <laughs> Alright, let me see what I can make. Okay, so here is what we have for the emergency rescue. Assuming that an engineer can put parts on to our target pod, uh, we have a Leo capsule because the Leo is just safest at this point, I think. Uh, we're just going to continue to go with it with the RTGs at the top on the assumption that we can recover it. And we've got supplementary, supplementary parachutes that we're going to be putting on the target pod. Uh, we've got an extra fuel tank here that we are going to put on the pod to deorbit it and so the engineer will take this engine and take that pod and put it on uh, t take the fuel tank and put it onto the pod and uh, we have extra nitrogen for EVAing here and uh, lots of extra nitrogen apparently I don't think I meant for all of it to be nitrogen so hold on a sec I wanted oxygen as well so let me Remove from symmetry, select contents, oxygen. Okay, so one oxygen and one nitrogen for the long haul, and food and water as well. And RCS ports, it's got mop propellant there, and I think maybe we should add some extra solar panels. I don't know if it'll need comms because it's got a Kerbal in, and we don't exactly need a whole lot of planning. The one thing we can't carry is a heat shield. I don't even know what diameter that part is. It's deprecated so it doesn't show up. So yeah, this might be a useless endeavor, but we might as well try. I think we'll put some of these solar batteries on, assuming we can put anything on anyway. And uh, ultimately it'll be Bill who is going to go up and try this rescue, and Bill will transfer into the Minmus mission to try and finish that because obviously Sergei won't be able to do that. So Sergei is a, you know, essentially a tourist at this point, can't leave the pod, and we will see how it goes. We've got way too many farmers. <laughs> uh, someday we'll get other things. If uh, USI is interfering with anything else, it's the fact that we can't get Kerbals who can actually do things we need them to do. But alright, it is Bill's time, finally, and we'll see if this works. Otherwise, eventually Sergei's gonna run out of life support anyway. There we go. Set us target. Okay. Well, based on the previous time, we can do a better job of the rendezvous, hopefully. Okay, though this doesn't take as long to get to orbit either, so there's that too. Alright, SAS on, Thal is up. Now we've got an interesting configuration. I've got the swivel engine at the bottom. This is cheap. And then we've got three spark engines on the second stage. And the reason being that it's cheaper than having two of the Decker engines, and also cheaper than having one Decker engine be high quality for safety's sake. So, uh, the Decker engine is just not very well priced. The Decker engine high quality is more than twice the cost of the regular Decker engine, so I'm like, eh. Anyway, ignition and launch. So, here we go. I have no idea whether Bill can even place the part. So we've got the engineering thing, but, uh, oh, we don't have the engineering thing. I don't know. Um, uh, we'll see. I haven't done much with the engineering system yet. Only have the vaguest notion of it, so I don't know whether Bill can do anything. I don't know what the limitations are really. 
we're a little bit wobbly right now. Swivel can gimbal, right? Mm, we have very low thrust to weight ratio with it at the moment. Delta V wise, this has plenty. Let's see, let's just go target. This is not always a good idea. <laughs> Rarely a good idea. On launch. Alright. Stage, stage, and ignition. Three sparks. Three also allow me to have a node at the center to connect it all without a structural part. Okay, well, we haven't actually made orbit yet, but we have an intercept point over there. Uh, it'll take some of the service module as well, so you better watch out for that. Oh, engine malfunctioned. Um, we should be able to hold it. Uh, okay, well. Go to this view. That to be one on the sides, huh? Okay. Separation and ignition using all of them. Okay, we should be in render range of Sergey again. Oh, there he is. Can't tell what the situation is. A few days worth of supplies and everything. The question is whether the pod is heat shielded enough to survive re-entry. Which, you know... This tough. Okay, coming alongside. Right. Well, EVA. Gotta find out what Bill can do. Uh, action groups. That's the... I think that's the engineering system. Let's try the depress thing though. Let's just stop the pressure control. We lost a little bit of nitrogen there. Okay, so let's get closer. Wish we had extra digits to work with on this stuff. I mean, it's very flat and all. So maybe that's good for re-entry. I guess we're parked enough. But we're gonna wobble as soon as he gets out. Uh, wait, could we have like attached that pod onto something? <laughs> uh, I might have thought of this completely the wrong way. Uh, fine. Nope, fine. Uh, fine. Oh, shoot. Um, okay, um... It's probably too far away now. That's not the best position for the parachute, but we'll take it for now. Really, I'm sure one of the radial parachutes would be enough. Well, let's just put that there for now. Um, keep thinking... Okay. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. No, don't do that. No. Uh, this the KIS system. I think we're using the KIS system is the thing. I forgot, he has KIS inventory too. I don't even... Uh, uh, yeah, the tool is for the KIS inventory. Jeez, so complicated. Um... Let's just get that tank. Oh no, the other the pod is spinning out of control now. Oh no. It's got electric charge though. Time warp? Okay. Gotta love stock. <laughs> well, without persistent rotation anyway. But it's starting to rotate again. It's probably glitchy. What a surprise. Deprecated part is glitchy. But it might help with re-entry. You never know. This might, yeah, it can whack our pod. 
I don't think we can attach anything on it, though. Hmm. Maybe if we go to a tracking station and come back. It's got those weird forces. I mean, it does have things imbalanced, right? It's got a parachute on one side and an engine on the other side. Well, it's getting dark now. Sergei's wreckage has stopped flipping around. Okay. We've drifted a bit. Okay, getting back together again, but in the dark. For once, I wish I had packed some lights on. Oh, too close, too close, too close. Ah! Okay. Sorry. Sorry for the boop. Okay, no, it's gotta start spinning again. No! Okay, well, Bill, come on over. Oh gosh, where is it? Alright. Wow, he drifted off a little while. Okay, let's see now. Oh, oh, okay, well, we got on the pod, but not where I wanted it to go. Um, can we get uh, up? Uh, cause I see a chance to get on that node. Oh, did he drift too far? Oh no, come on. Okay, that's not where I want it. Okay, there. Okay. Oh, he's still doing something. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Not that this will work at all, but... <laughs> uh, that stuff will totally be destroyed. I don't know. Probably our Kerbal is going to be in trouble anyway. But we're going to try our best. Oh, it started rotating again. Okay. No, it's gonna start rotating. Tracking station again. Oh uh, boy. This part, well, it's deprecated. <laughs> it's surely deprecated. Okay, well, it's steady now. Okay. I guess this side will be fine. That one. Slowly trying to get the hang of this. This engineering mode as opposed to the KIS way of doing things. Might not be a good idea to have the extra mass of the extra parachute at all. We've got extra battery power there. Alright, I think it's enough. I think Bill can get back into Bill's pod. I don't know what's going to happen. Probably, uh, if I had to make a guess, um, the other pod is going to flip out and explode on re-entry anyway. Grab. Board. Alright, for now Bill is safe. Let's just see what happens. Got some electric charge. We'll get some more in daylight. This pod takes a lot of power though, but okay, we are recharging. Let's just recharge for a bit. Um, in this craft, we want to get to a safe, well, the periapsis is fine. We'll leave Bill be. Then Bill will have to get to the Minmus mission, which might kill Bill. Uh, oh no, kill Bill. Anyway, um, who knows. We have no apparent control over this. This doesn't have a reaction wheel inside. Ah, <laughs> uh, I forgot that might be a problem. I didn't check whether this had a reaction wheel. It doesn't. So great. We'll just wait until we we're going towards our retrograde marker. Okay. It would probably imbalance with the parachutes being where they are. We're gonna go with that. Deploy mode while when safe. Are they active or not? Just gonna stage them. We can't stage. 
Oh no. I'm I'm tired of this. We're we can't we can't control this at all. We have no it's got no command module. Ah There's still some time. Okay. Uh, tell you what, folks, I'm going to listen to your recommendations. <laughs> we are going to, uh, we, we have some things here. Uh, Bill should get to the Minmus mission eventually, but we have a situation here. And we could just slap a controller on, I think. Uh, you know what? Hmm. We could send another mission with a controller and have Bill slap it on. Uh, this... Do you think this is going to survive? I don't even know if there's any heat tolerance on this part. So yeah, uh, this is the situation. Sergey, emergency rescue. Uh, and I'll hear what you guys have to think. What do you propose? It'll be interesting. So we'll see what happens to Sergey and Bill in the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.